Uh, I am curious to to hear your thoughts on uh, the American pit bull terrier, like for a fam, like for the family dog. I've seen some shy temperament. I've seen some aggressive. I've seen some absolute wonderful working dogs that come out of the pound. I've seen some dogs that want to eat everything in sight, and I'm not talking four legged. Uh, come out of the pound and or be bred. So I, 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 I'm not a big fan of the pit bull um, as a pet. The main rule of thumb for me is never trust your pit bull not to fight. I don't care how good they get along with the other dogs. Yeah, so. I, I have seen uh, dogs that never had an issue. Uh, uh, and then all of a sudden they, you know, they have one fight and it's almost like they really enjoyed it. And uh, they become almost like, yeah. Like they really want another one. Yeah, that's exactly you, what happens. Do you see that a lot? Yes. No? Okay. Yes, absolutely. What's up, everyone? We are back for the second episode of Elevated Canine Podcast here with my co-host, Roel Guerra. Say, what's up, Roel? What's up, guys? Good to be and uh, today... I have the we have the pleasure of having uh, somebody who has not only paved the way for a different breed, but I think for any breed, she has competed at very high levels. Uh, you know, I'm going to just go down her resume real quick with Rosie, uh, American Pitbull Terrier, uh, Shuts and Three, Goose, Shuts and Three, also a Pitbull Terrier, Capone, also a Pitbull Terrier, French Ring Level 2, PSA 1, UCDX and Grand Champion, Romel, French Ring Mondial Ring 1, Changa, who she went and competed in different parts of the world, uh, French Ring 3, and she was a NARA champion as well, which is a big deal. Uh, Cassie, who I had the pleasure of uh, work. I, I actually, I also worked at Changa, but Cassie, I also uh, had the pleasure of working, and she had a French Ring Level 3 CD and working Pitbull champion. Hasna, who I also worked in trial once, uh, she competed with her in Mexico and France at French Ring 3, and she has also done confirmation judging. Uh, I think you went to Italy, mm -hmm. I want to say. And uh, and then now she has Lucy, who I'm sure you guys have seen her on Instagram and everywhere. Uh, and anyways, I just, uh, I'm really happy to have Larry Hansen here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so uh, real quick, uh, I'm just going to touch on this real quick. When I first started uh, in French ring, I joined a club, SoCal All Breed Ringers, and Larry was one of my uh, my mentors there who was helping me out. She saw that I had a Connie Corso, and she has always been one for the underdogs, I think. And uh, so she made sure that, you know, she helped me out as much as she can, and I really appreciate that. So, uh, yeah. Um, Larry Hansen, I don't know if I ever told you this, but... One of the main reasons I wanted to do sport with my my own pit bull was because of some of the videos I'd seen of you doing different podcasts. And I'll never forget in one podcast you said, um, I've always wanted to take a dog that didn't come from a working line and see if I could get that dog a title. And that was one of the main reasons I started. I've always owned uh, you know, that, that breed of dog, but that was one of the main reasons why I decided, you know what? I, I kind of like that. It's it's a little it's an underdog story. It's a dog that doesn't have anything proven in its past, and just going based off of the dog you have in front of you, uh, you want to try and get that dog somewhere. And that was one of the main reasons why I decided to do it with my dog as well. And then I'll never forget the first time you pulled up to the Airwindale field. I went up to Oscar and I was like, "That's Larry Hansen." He was fan over there. <laughs> I was starstruck. <laughs> you know, you're you're big in the pit bull world, so. That, that was uh, pretty cool to see. And now I get to work with you on a regular basis, which yeah. is pretty so, awesome. awesome. So uh, why don't we get started from the beginning? Why don't you tell us a little bit about your story? Um, so I grew up with dogs in the family, mostly Dobermans. My dad and my mom liked Chihuahuas. And I, uh, my dad always took them to obedience class, like a PetSmart or Parks and Rec. And I enjoyed doing the homework on the Dobermans and and he would do the graduation, and I thought that was cool. Then that was in Buena Park. Then when we moved to Long Beach, um, we had a horse facility, and we had a lot of cattle dogs and Australian Shepherds and still Dobermans. Um, and at that time, I was competing with the horses and barrel racing, 
Jim Canna, a little bit of Hunter's Jumpers, a um, little bit of the rodeo circuit. And then um, my husband, my current husband, uh, he had like both of you, pit bulls all his life too. And um, we decided to get a little pup together. And out of the penny saver, I've told this story so many times, I'm sure it's, <laughs> it's all old good. to many, um, $250, old family red nose. And that didn't mean anything to me. Still doesn't mean anything to me, to tell you the truth. Um, and that was Frazier. And Frazier was Rosie's dad. Uh, Frazier did a BH, a WH, a CDX. He was a grand champion. Um, he was a neat dog, a really good family dog. And uh, just a... Just a nice dog. That's when uh, Annette Cheek with Baroness, Cheek's Red Baroness, uh, Schutzen 3, she'd contacted me uh, about stud service. That's when I met Al Banuelos and had the dog evaluated to see if he was a suitable stud for her. And um, he not only tested Frazier, but he tested uh, Rosie as well. And um, that's kind of how the sport part of it got going. Yeah, it wasn't intended that way. So do you think you were always a, uh into it just because you enjoyed the training or do you think at like myself at at one point it became about me uh making a name for myself myself and getting titles uh what do, you, what do you think do you think that you were uh you know into the competition or you just really enjoyed the training uh definitely enjoyed the training uh also enjoyed the training but also um i wanted i wanted something better for the breed because they were in the news a lot, as they are now too, but um, kind of in a, a negative light. So I was really hopeful that we could get more people to uh, catch on and you know maybe try it. Um, South Bay Dog Fanciers, I was president of that club for a while, and um, I was all on my, my obedience high, and we decided we were going to change the logo, and I wanted... I wanted a dumbbell in there and a little jump like they, they haven't. And we got it, but there was some opposition. They It was a pit bull club. They didn't want it to be the pit bull obedience club. Um, and then my very first competition uh, was Rosie. No, it was Frazier in Sub Novice. Sub Novice is like a fun class. It's not even a licensed class. And I had a runoff with a peach poodle. And it's kind of, what do they call it? Um, first one to make a mistake. Got it. Um, loses. Like a, like a sudden death. Type sudden of death. Deal? That's it. Yeah. And um, and we won that. And I had always been competitive with the horses when I was really little. And so now I'm like, okay, I got the dogs now. I'm going to be competitive there too. And it wasn't necessarily, a, a, again, to build my name, but it was to take a dog that most people said, that dog shouldn't be out here doing obedience yeah. and trying to do something good with them. So, so uh, now, now that you've been, and, and both of you guys are, you know, uh, fans of, you know, of the American Pitbull Terrier. Uh, I am curious to, to hear your thoughts on uh, the American Pitbull Terrier, like for a fam, like for the family dog, for we, we, there's a lot of them in the shelter that are mixed, you know, with some pit bull in them or whatever. And somehow, you know, they always get adopted out and they have, they get a bad rap and everybody says it's the owner. It's not the, not the breed. What are your thoughts on that? It's the individual dog. You know, it's so, uh, our standard is so loose when it comes to not only the physical aspects, but also the temperament of it as well. And, um, you know, I've, I've seen some shy temperaments in, in Italy, in Panama, in the United States, I've seen some aggressive in all of these places i've seen some absolute wonderful working dogs that come out of the pound i've seen some dogs that want to eat everything in sight and i'm not talking four-legged uh come out of the pound and or be bred so i i i'm not a big fan of the pitbull um as a pet i just think they're a huge responsibility and i mean you might get that one that loves all the other dogs, can go to dog park, dog beach, you know, babysits the kids. But I think that's the exception, not the rule. And uh, according to our standard, um, they should be a, a working utility type dog. Um, they're not necessarily bred to work for a man, um, but 
they can be a great asset to a family for sure. And if you have some property or a farm, but you have to always, uh, the main rule of thumb for me is never trust your pit bull not to fight. I don't care how good they get along with the other dogs. Yeah. So. I, I have seen uh, dogs that never had an issue. A, a, and then all of a sudden they, you know, they have one fight and it's almost like they really enjoyed it. And uh, they become almost like, yeah. Like they really want another one. Yeah, that's exactly you, what happens. Do you see that a lot? Yes. Or no? Okay. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It flips a switch in their mind. I mean, whether they, most people are not, a lot of the pet people are not going to like the fact that the history of the breed is for fighting. It, it, that's what they were bred to do. And they got really famous due to some people writing articles about them, about their their courage, their tenacity, their determination, which made them People want to get them, and like Larry said, those weren't those weren't supposed to be pet dogs, mm -hmm. and uh, and a lot of the dogs that end up in the shelter are in there for a reason. As much as people think mm -hmm. they're just being discriminated against, well, even if the dog isn't aggressive or it doesn't bite anybody, it's a high. A lot of them have high drive. They have a lot of energy, and they destroy stuff in the house. Mm -hmm. And the main reason all of these dogs go to the shelter is because they destroy things, mm -hmm. and people don't know how to deal with that. So it's definitely not a first time owner dog. No, I agree with that. And, and I also think that if you're considering the breed for the first time, um, you need to come to terms with it's a fighting breed. Your dog yeah. may never fight. Hopefully it never fights, but it is a fighting breed. And if they, so the thing about pit bulls, they don't necessarily need a reason to fight. It's not necessarily based over food, toy, sex, dominance, whatever. It can be for the pure pleasure of it. They can be playing really nice and then boom, it escalates so quick. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is respect the breed. You have to respect what they were intended for and what they're capable of yep. and manage accordingly. Yeah. Not all of them are going to fight, but you shouldn't be surprised when it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've seen some that I'm like, better watch that dog, man. You mm -hmm. better watch that dog. Um, all right. So, uh, why don't we get into a little bit of the, the training side of it? And, um, you know, what's, what's something that you, you've trained both Malinois and Pitbull Terrier for, uh, American Pitbull Terrier for a competition. What are some of the big differences, uh, that you have seen in, you know, working with each one of them? And, and I know that every dog is, you know, sure. you could have a really amazing American Pitbull Terrier that gives you almost, this, you know, some of the goods that you get with the good Malinois. Yeah. But what, what do you, what do you, uh, what do you think the big difference? Is? Well, I, I think also you, um, you have to look at the sport you're choosing to French rings, a really hard sport. And I've done most of the sports out there and I'm not saying it's a harder dog that, uh, titles in it, but it's a difficult sport in the sense that, um, well, for example, the majority of people who fail the brevet fail on handler error, not necessarily the dog, but they say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Um, uh, the Malin you know, Malinois are exceptional animals. They were bred for many, many generations uh, to work, to jump, to work hard, uh, super bright, super quick, catch on. You got to be careful uh, with any dog. You got to be careful what you teach them because you may not even realize you're teaching them something and you go, oops, where'd that come from? Well, uh, darn, I did it accidentally. Um and, you know, I've heard some trainers uh, that that I admire say, you train a pit bull the same way you train a any other dog. And I don't necessarily agree with that completely. Uh, the pit bulls can be very handler sensitive. They can be very sensitive to their, to their people and uh, a little more decoy hard. I haven't had one of those in a long time, but <laughs> I'm still looking. Um, but yeah, they can, uh, you know, you have to have a little balance. And that's not to say that uh, the Malinois can't be shut down a little bit too. You know, the beauty about it right now, what, what's happening in um, the dog training world is the training is so phenomenal now. That's thanks to people like you and a lot of your, your buddies, um, well, you know, Mike Ellis has been around yeah. forever too, but, um, yeah, yeah, definitely Sinante too, right? and, um, uh, just a lot of different people you, and YouTube. Yeah, of course. You know, 
Well, that's a whole nother uh, rabbit hole to go down to. You know? <laughs> no, no, but I, I get what you're saying. The, the you're talking about the methods from you know back back in the day to yeah. right now have really evolved for sure, absolutely. Yeah. And so I think we're uh, we're competing with better dogs, and I think that's why some of the sports are <clears throat> getting a little more um, specific. Like, I mean, you don't want to lose any points in your obedience because you know you're going to lose it in protection. So obedience, you must keep them all. And really in French ring, that's the only thing you have control over is your obedience because your bite work, it's up to it's up to your decoy. You need to have uh, control in between each exercise, of course. But for your retrieves and your jump and your positions and all that other stuff, and it's not nearly as um, specific as Schutzen, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, but in French ring or in Mondio ring, those are the two sports, and perhaps PSA as well, that you give your decoy, your training decoy, pretty much complete control over your uh, competition dog. Yeah. Because, you know, like I tell people, without a decoy, you're just an obedience club. So, um you got to hopefully if you're working an off breed, any off breed, uh, you've got to have a decoy that's open minded. And some of them just don't want. Uh, and that's a lovely thing about you. And I'm so glad that you started uh, with the Corso because um, you're open minded enough to. Yeah. You know, it's something a little bit different. Let's let's give it a go. You know, the other thing, too, as you and this goes with any breed, but especially with the pit bull, as you start peeling back the layers you start progressing further and further into the training. Then you start seeing what you have. You know, most puppies look pretty good, right? Yep. And then you go along a little way and they change teeth and maybe they have their first cycle or maybe you're putting a little more uh, pressure on them to, to step up. And all of a sudden it, it's not, there, not anymore. there anymore. Or sometimes they bite like a monster, but they don't support the out. If I have to out, I don't really want to bite. Right. So you know you've yeah. seen it. All. Yeah. No, and I think like working with uh with Leela with Royals uh, girl, you know I, I I see it. I'm like oh like it's it's and it's a tough spot because it's like we want to build the dog up, but then she can't focus on anything other than biting, mm-hmm. and so then we balance it. And but if we're a little too hard on her, mm-hmm. then she then the bite suffers a little bit. Yeah. And so it's always like a, a balancing act almost. And you got to find better ways to work the out. And like I was telling the Royal, I'm like, look, I say we let her know like, hey, these are the rules you have to abide by. Even if the bite suffers a little bit and then we build up the bite mm-hmm. again. And that's I mean, that's really the the, the way that I think is going to work best for her. Yeah. And, and, and again, I'm still learning. So I'm still experimenting. And I'm, you know, every dog is different. And that's the that's the beautiful thing about dog training. Yeah. I think. And Leela reminds me a little bit of uh, Nala, who is High's uh, littermate to High's dog, Wes. And, and I got her at four years of age. And um, and Cassie, I had already shipped her off to Diane. And um, I thought this little bitch was really, oh, she was just going to go all the way. I just knew it. And um, I struggled with her. I, I tried um, motivation and clicker and food. And, and I went to prong. And then I went to electric and, and toy. And at, at home and in certain areas around my house, she'd give me some pretty good attention and, and work. But once we were out, if we were anywhere near a training field, she was in hunt mode. She went, she didn't, you couldn't block her. You just couldn't block her. Like she got her sights set on mm-hmm. something and it, you stood and she's fighting to get around it. And I see a little bit of that in, yeah. in your girl too. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's that commitment and that drive and that intensity that they want. But we got to like, Oscar says, you know, um, get going with the other parts of it too. And maybe we lose a little bit of the grip yeah. and mm-hmm. hey, in French ring, the grip's not judged. Right. So yeah. that's a, a savior oh, yeah. and move on. Yeah. yeah. Thankfully what, what we've been doing so far, I mean, yesterday for me, it was, was huge. There was, there was no e-collar on her and, uh, you know, we let her bite. She was outing. She was mm-hmm. having fun. She wasn't so fixated. She was walking with me yeah. usually, but as soon as I get her out of the, the truck, she just wants to bite. She's yeah. just fixated yeah. on the decoy. Um, you know, I was going to, I was going to say that I think there's something to be said about um, first time competition handlers. Um, I think they have a tendency to 
almost build the dog up more than it needs and maybe not even intentionally and not only with the bulldogs you know with Everything, with yeah. other breeds as well too like um in changa's litter like almost all and it was a big litter almost all of those dogs ended up being like a ring three but we had in our club alone um three dogs and um adrian and i both had some experience, prior experience. And then we had um, this other dog that this was his first time. And, and this dog was strong. And I have to guess, or I have to try and figure out why was that dog so strong? Because the handler was so unsure. And even right. though we guide, you know, we try to guide him as best we can. And there are two, um, there are two pit bulls right now uh, in Southern California that I see fairly regularly. Um, one of them is both of them are dynamite, but one in particular, man, I wish it was my dog. That dog is really, really good. And he's with a novice mm -hmm. handler. And um, that, you know, I hate to say this, but it's doubtful he'll ever go and step on a, a field. But I would bet money I could take that dog right now. You could take that dog right yeah. now and have it titled like quickly. Yep. It's a good dog yep. um but you know i see i see that dog starting to get a little bit out of control because the corrections the timing all of that stuff's wrong and he's like the dog's like you don't know what's yeah. up if al handles him or i handle him it's a little bit different yeah. so and and i think that i mean that happens a lot. I, I, I see it happening all the time like even with leela like in the beginning with raw was first you know handling her in protection he wouldn't like grab the lines right or he'd be like panicking yeah. to grab the lines and the dog's just like going even crazier yeah, yeah. The dogs understand when you're not you're not in oh, control, yeah. Oh, yeah. and uh, that really and that's what that's why a lot of people like Schutz and dogs, um, like German Shepherds. A lot of people get like breeders get those back, and they just get these like powerful dogs back. And I got a year old; they get this dog back, and they are able to title them at a very high level because the person just could not handle them, you know. Mm -hmm. And those are actually some of the best ones, yeah. uh, you know, that that come out. Sometimes. I mean, for sure, I'm a, a strong believer in the more you struggle, the more power you give them. And uh, so you've got to keep yourself in check with, okay, this isn't working. Let me stop for a minute. How can I do this a little bit different? And, um, you know, I'm looking at Jay Lynn and, and uh, Chris Sykes puppies. And I'm, and, and you know what I think of when I, when I see their videos or when I've seen them live, um, one of the first times I brought Lucy to see you as a puppy and you're playing with her and you said, have you started the out yet? And I'm like, well, no, she's just a puppy. And you're like, yeah, but look at the way she bites. Yeah. And I am so thankful for that. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I might be in trouble right now because yeah. you know how sensitive she is also. And if we hadn't started it as early as we did, um, then maybe. You might have to be a little bit harder on her. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. And I, and I, I mean, I, I just think it's uh, if the dog bites uh, for me, there's no reason why not teach him the out mm -hmm. uh, i don't think it's gonna you know if, if if that messes up the dog then i think you got bigger problems ahead and so i just think uh yeah yeah i, I if I, I see it very early on especially with like with his dog i think we worked her one time like at four months and i was like yeah she's got it bro and then the second time i saw her i was like oh yeah i was like uh, we need to get on her because we're going to have some problems. <laughs> the second time he was like, did you teach her to out? And I was like, no. And he was like, why not? <laughs> and I didn't even want to work her. I was like, I'm not going to work this dog yep. when this, when, when Royal hasn't even like taught her the out, like it makes no sense for us to give this dog bites. I know she's going to bite. Why am I going to give her a bite when she, when I'm going to have to hang her off the bite and mm -hmm. stuff? Like, yeah. um, I'm not going to do that. So yeah, I don't think we gave her any bites until we taught her the out and stuff. No, and even then, like, even when she had the out, with me on a tug, she still wasn't out on a decoy. And for me, you know, from my experience as a new handler, I was so enamored by the bite. Yeah, of And course. I see the videos on Instagram and I see all the pit bull people and doing, you know, I'm like, they're bragging about how powerful and how great the bite is. And that also affected my handling because I was so, even though I was behind Leela and we're doing bite work and Oscar's in the suit, I'm so focused on trying to watch what she's doing that it slips my mind that I need to grab the leash and I need to yeah. pay attention to the back tie. Be in the moment. And be in the moment, exactly, because I'm trying to sit outside of the moment and watch what's happening. See if somebody's filming. Is somebody filming this? <laughs> right. Is somebody getting this? Yeah, because, you know, and, and, I, and, I, and you see it not just with sport people, but, you know, people who get pit bulls and, you know, on that side of Instagram, they try to 
they do all the stuff that they see on Instagram, that they see other people who have had these dogs for years doing on Instagram, and then they try to they try to emulate it. Mm-hmm. And then I get DMs from people, hey, my dog's like this, my dog's like that. What do I need to do? What do I, what happened? Mm-hmm. Why yeah. made the same mistakes? And and, and, and and some people don't see um, the behind the scenes sometimes. Like, I, I hate to say it like this, but I mean, we've had to correct Leela pretty good mm-hmm. because yeah. she's not there. She is not, you know, she can't focus. And the way I see it is if she's not even able to focus here in the field with this, imagine if something happens outside of the field, she gets a hold of anything, anything, Mm -hmm. and you can't control the dog. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a big, big, big problem. And I don't care how, you know, you could say, you could say, you know, I corrected the dog pretty hard because I knew, I know that that's what that dog needs. Mm -hmm. It's not because, you know, I'm, I'm being a jerk or, you know, trying to be unfair, but I know that if that dog doesn't get that right now, (laughs) uh, bigger problems can happen in the future and not just for the dog, but for other people, other, other people or dogs or whatever. Let me ask you, Oscar, do you think she learned from those corrections? A hundred percent. Yeah. I was just about to say Uh since then, She's she isn't so uh, tunnel visioned mm-hmm. when she gets on the mm-hmm. field. She's yeah, way yeah. more clear in her in how she thinks. Yesterday I was I outed her and she outed almost every single time without any pressure. Yep. No pressure. We on didn't have an, to we on didn't a have new to. decoy. Yeah. And and it was more like a, a building session. We were like, we're gonna give her grips in different areas, like just build her up, build her up. Not I, and I told them, don't put no e collar on her. We're just gonna build her up and see where she's at. Every time he told her to out, boom, she wow. she outed. So to me, that was a win. I'm like, okay. it, it's working. Whatever yeah. we're doing is working. Um, and, you know, and again, it could look a little har- harsh sometimes, but now I know that we have that reliability mm-hmm. back there. And I could, you know, and she knows that she could be kept accountable when she's biting like that or when she's in that state of mind. And you feel more comfortable moving forward. A hundred percent. Now I feel like we could, okay, now we can start moving. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, I remember she was like, one time she went for like my stomach. Like she was, mm-hmm. just wasn't there. She is, And it's not because she wanted to like, oh, I'm going to get a, st- I'm going to bite his stomach. She just wasn't there. Yeah. She just didn't see anything. Yeah. She, you know, so, uh, and, and I, I didn't get upset about that, but I was, in my head, I go, okay, we need to definitely uh, tone her down a little bit because. And that's a really um, difficult type of dog to have for your first competition dog. Yeah. Because the other thing too, is like, so you've got this plan and you get her out on the line and then like you have to switch gears. The decoy does. And we hope the new handler kind of gets in on the vibe and, and sees where we're going with it too, or somebody standing by to step in and, and help. But um, you know, sometimes the, the best thought out plans, they'll be abandoned immediately, depending on what the dog's showing us at that moment. Mm-hmm. So you, um, you've got a, you've got a tough one to, you know, and I mean, like you mentioned it earlier, there are some dogs that they just don't support a, a program. You know, they are, they're too tough. They're too hard. They're to tunnel vision, whatever it is. And, um, and I know a, a, a few people, you know, who have had dogs like that and you know, they either get sold to police departments or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are good dogs. They're just not necessarily competition for dogs for that sport. Maybe. Yeah. But I don't know too many bitches like that. I mean, Nala, I think was one like that. Um, Jonathan Katz had her originally or no, I mean the, the breeder had her and then, uh, Jonathan Katz got her and then I saw a video and I made a comment and I said, Oh darn, I wish I had gotten her. And he's like, she's yours. And he sent her to me. And, and then I, I got really bummed out. She almost broke me. I'm like, I've never been able to not get through to a dog or especially a pit bull. And I couldn't do it with her. And, um, so she went back and he, uh, had one of his trainers. They were PSA bound. And, and I'm like, more power to you if you can do it. And that is absolutely incredible because, Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't. And then he he spent some time with it and he said, nah, she's just a pet. She helps us train decoys. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And you know who um, actually was the one who turned me on to, you know, this, this dog is four years old. She is what she is, was Patrice. Patrice was um, doing a seminar for us and he was staying at the house and, and I, and he, so he had worked her and then he'd seen her around the house as well. And around the house, she was really cool. Once she was out of the house, she was, she was different. She was bonkers. Yeah. So, 
That's interesting. You don't have that anyway. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you know, it, she could have gone that direction. Um, but you talked to me the first first day that she, when you stepped on the field and she was fixated on you, and you said, "Do you want to go protection or do you want to go sport?" And at that at at that point in time, I was more focused on protection. Mm -hmm. Um, where I guess her losing control isn't that big of a deal. You know what I mean? But I'm glad you you asked me that question, and I talked to Oscar about it. And we're trying to go sport, so we'll see what happens with it. Yeah, and I mean, and and just because you go sport does not mean that she's not gonna oh, be able 100%. to be a protection dog. I just 100%. feel like now you're gonna have a lot more control over the dog because exactly. when people go, oh, I'm gonna have a protection dog. Well, it's very easy to brush everything else under the rug like oh well i don't need to have a good out i don't need to have a good healing i don't need to have this i don't need to have that it's like excuse after excuse after excuse like oh okay so now it's like i i if you tell me hey i want to do sport then we're going to put you under a program and i'm going to keep you accountable to learn that side of it as well and if you don't i'm not going to keep working your dog there were times that he come out and i know that he wasn't working I wouldn't even tell him to get the dog out. I'd be like, all right, I'm just, and maybe if he says something, I'll be like, well, did you do this? Nope. Oh uh, yeah. Next time. Mm -hmm. and, and, I know, I, and I know it too. And you know, yeah. I won't even ask to bring my dog out. You know there what I'm saying? There's been plenty of times where yeah. I just left her in the truck. It's like, you know, it's like, yo, if you're not putting in the work, I'm not going to be, you know, doing it if you're not doing it. So when he said, when he tells me, Hey, I'm going to put in the work and I see him putting in the work then I'm like, all right, cool. Then I will, put in the work as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, you touched on uh, both of you on the personal protection with the pit bull. And, and I got to say, and, and, and I'm sure a lot of people disagree with me because I have many, many friends who do use the breed as their personal protection dog. And I'm not down with that. Although a lot of people are not down with pit bulls being used in French ring either. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I get it. Um, but I, I think there are breeds that are better suited um for mm -hmm. it just like there are breeds better suited for sport as well it's yeah. tough you know? yeah it, it is tough i uh i saw a, I, I have when i was a kid i saw a pit bull uh break break out of a house a door broke busted the door and uh attacked this lady and it was vicious it was not it was and i don't care you know what I'm, and this dog you know had no training or anything and uh and i was like holy crap now that I've been involved in, in dogs a lot more and stuff, <clears throat> I get it. I, I, I could see the, the cool factor about having mm -hmm. a protection dog. You know, you go somewhere, somebody tries to do. I have trained Wapo as a sport dog. I know he's going to buy. Like I've seen I, I, I've seen him how he, you know, some people got lucky. I had some other things have happened and, you know, that I can't mention on here that I'm like, and this dog was never meant to be. Uh, I'm going to take him with me wherever I go because he's my protection dog and this and that. He's a sport. To me, he's a sport dog. He's he's my sport dog. But if the dog has it, if the dog is a good dog, I don't care whether you trained him for protection or if he has it, he's going he's gonna to go in all in for you. Um, or you could have amazing dogs that, and, and I have seen it over, over and over again, they do personal protection. I see them... It, all the time at the field doing all kinds of scenarios. And then I'll do something as simple as, you know, just walking into the house and they don't bite. Matter of fact, they go, holy crap, they run the other way. So I think the whole personal protection thing is, is it's cool. Uh, but for me, I'd rather, uh, I, I stay, I stay, I stay away from it, especially when you have a lot to lose. It's like, nah, I'm, I'm not with it anymore. Yeah, you know, and when I first started, I um, the type of dogs that I had then, I thought, um, I thought that was normal, and you kind of had to have that in order to do protection sports or bite sports. And like Goose, um, you know, even Nelly will tell you, uh, and, and Al just admitted it the other day. He didn't like Goose. He helped me get him to a three, and Nelly used to say, "I had nightmares about that dog chasing me." And you know, Goose was. I think he would have rather been a personal protection dog, but, um, I had a couple bites with him, you know, one 
actually two to the face. So he was a personal protection dog. Yeah, he wasn't protecting me. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't protecting me, and and it, it, there was no threat. So I've um, I've seen what just a nip um, yeah. can do, and I've got grandkids. You know, I've got grandkids, and shoot, my husband came in from the market a, a month or so ago, and our neighbors who have three pit bull dogs, generally they only walk two, but they had the the third one, and um, he nailed my husband in the thigh. Um, it wasn't bad, but I mean, he left a pretty good bruise there. Mm -hmm. And this is not the first time this dog's bit. And, and, and um, my concern is the kids. There's a lot of kids in the neighborhood, yeah. and I don't care whose dog it is, or uh, if if my kid gets bit because your dog is loose. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be a problem. And and I th I just think that, you know, sometimes and I and I've done all the, you know, I still enjoy all the muzzle work and all that. I I love that stuff. Um it's I'm I, mean, I do it more so in the field now. Uh before I used to have like, you know, fake break-ins into my house and this and that. I just felt like uh you open up a you open up a box that, you know, and you're opening up in the dog's mind, I think you're opening up a lot more options mm -hmm. and, uh, and accidents can happen. Yeah. And I think the last thing we want to see is somebody get hurt yep. over our, uh, negligent mm -hmm. behavior, at least for me. Um, you know, I, I it scares me. Yeah it, yeah, it does me too. And I think, um, with the people that kind of want to go that route and if you are assisting them in any type of bite work, you've got to feel really, um, assured that they are responsible, careful, um, not just with their dog, but with their life, you know, maybe they're really good with their dog, but they are super carefree in the life. Then that might be a problem too, that you're assisting that I uh, am, yeah, yeah. it, it's, it can go yeah. down. So let me, uh, for, for everybody watching, let me, let me go down this real quick. Uh, and, and cause you know, I, we, a lot of people that watch us, they, they, they love personal protection training and all that stuff. I got contacted by, and I, I, I've probably mentioned it somewhere before but i got contacted uh by someone and they said they hey i have this dog here uh that you trained um and you know uh, i just got him and i'm just trying to find out what kind of training you did with it i heard you did some bite work with it and stuff and you know he's a cool dog and i'm just you know i want a little bit more information and once he once i found out who the dog was i was like hey man i only had that dog when he was like three months and i remember giving the dog back after like three days because i just got some really bad vibes from the owner uh so yeah that i didn't really do anything with that dog and he goes well uh i'm actually a private investigator and i am res i'm researching you know on the background of this dog because he actually bit a kid took him out of the stroller it was a malinois took the kid out of the stroller and there's like now they're trying to like there's a big lawsuit and they're trying to find anybody who has done anything with this dog so that they could you know yeah so that they could go after him so luckily i didn't do anything with this dog and they didn't come after me mm -hmm. but that could have easily been a huge lawsuit um against me yeah if, especially if you know now that people are putting videos on instagram and everything all the proof is there mm -hmm. you know yeah. and so uh i just uh you know for everybody listening just be careful careful because uh right. you know you, you think nothing's gonna happen to you until it does and then there's big issues and it's a crazy world right now i yeah. i get it i understand and, and believe me there was i think on one podcast i i was talking to with zeke i said yeah i wouldn't mind um getting my little bully to be personal protection just because i don't want to carry a gun but i think i'm kind of at a point now where um i hope i have a dog that's got the look at least and, mm -hmm. and that will be enough because um yeah sometimes a dog that will just bark you know keep people away do the boogeyman with the dog and he barks yeah. at the person that's yeah. more than enough I, most people are not going to want to mess with the other dog you have to always think in the back of your mind this is a loaded gun yeah it's a loaded gun you have to treat it like a loaded gun wherever you go yeah. so it's you know it's a can of worms that if you open up you can't put the worms back in the can with your dog yeah. i think for me uh, um i feel like uh I don't want my pit, I don't feel the need to have my pit bulls protect me. What I feel adamant about is I need to protect them. Uh, yeah. And that's just by trying to be really responsible and trying to, and believe me, I, I've had accidents too. I mean, we, we all have, Nobody, nobody's perfect, but um, 
I, I suspect that the breed won't be around legally, you know, hopefully not in my lifetime, but probably maybe in you guys's. Yeah, the way the way things are going right now, you know, people are trying to ban everything mm -hmm. and create all these organizations to stop different types of training. Yeah. And I hate to say it, but if they re they stop some of this style of training, some, you know, some not so good things could happen, especially yeah. for breeds like the pit bull terrier and the Dobermans and the Belgian Malinois and all that, you know, because not everybody has, uh, you know, not, I mean, even the, the pure positive people I've seen one name right now that's supposedly pure positive. She got rid of the dog cause she'd rather not deal with some of the issues. Mm -hmm. And so to me it goes, you know, I think that, you know, it's going to be a disservice to all dogs yeah, uh, the way things are going. All right. So I got one, uh, question for you larry from one of our uh, followers and actually we have two of them and we're going to touch on these real quick and uh i know you're busy so we'll uh, we'll let you we'll let you go this one's <laughs> tips and tricks is but from molly dogs dot etc tips and tricks for training off breeds motivating them keeping training fun oh well um so for my personal dogs, they're usually in the house. Um, I've never been one to just, I, I have had a couple dogs that preferred being outside and living in a kennel and just coming in like to hang out every now and then. But I like my dogs to be a part of the family pretty early on. And um, I use their food, uh, you know, to I hand feed them, mm -hmm. you know, for like the first couple of weeks. And usually like in the first day or two, you'll find out if the dog has got, you know, what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, sometimes you can just feed them in the bowl and still use your kibble for training. Um, I like to do a lot of confidence uh, building stuff. Um, I was talking to somebody recently about their puppy. I, I said, he's a little bit of a floater. And she says, what's that? And I, and so I said, like when you're holding the leash and you're walking, you know, the leash is really light. So it's like, it's kind of like you don't have a dog out there. Yeah. And, um, if I have a puppy that wants to pull into the line, like I follow them, I want to see where they want to go. Um, let them open up and explore. And I like that in a puppy. Um, and then I'm, a. I'm not great at it, but I, I like to free shape a little bit too. Nice. Um, like eight, 10 weeks, I want to start free shaping a little bit of a, a fetch, you know, just touching yeah. the, the PVC or going around a, a little cone. Um, so those listeners that don't know what uh, sh free shaping is, it is uh, letting the dog basically discover different behaviors and you just reward approximation, yeah. whether it be, you know, going around a cone or holding something in their mouth. Yeah. Um, it's fun. And, you know, the majority of my dogs that I, I taught in the old days, they did not have the, um, the benefit of my education and I'm still learning always every day. Um, but it was kind of harsh. It was, it was pretty harsh and play. I'm not, I'm still to this day, I'm not the best player. I did use food. Um, not as much as I use now, but, um, and it was a lot of yank and crank. So, I. The older I've gotten, I've definitely softened up and the dog's um, emotion totally matters. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the dog is a competition dog, um, I'm trying to dis um, trying to figure it out earlier um, when when am I going to cut my losses? So like the last couple puppies I've gotten, um, loved them as puppies. That's why I say, you know, puppies are great. Right. Um, and then as we started getting in the work and my, my husband, now that he's retired, he's home all the time. So he sees me training a lot and, and I'll have a bad day or bad session. He'll say, um, he's still a baby. He's just a baby. Give him time. Give him time. All right. Okay. Give him time. Give him time. Yeah. Um, so now I think with puppies, if, if this, um, question is geared towards a competition dog uh, a lot of people are going to keep the dog they have regardless if it works out for sport or not um, I think I'm hoping I have at least a couple more sport dogs in my lifetime um, and and I need to see it early I need yep. to see it early like by six months <laughs> I agree with that <laughs> so. I think a lot of too many people like wait and stuff and I and actually I've seen like Rocky your your Rocky 
that dog did not even bite at like six months or something. Then all of a sudden he was like the hardest biting dog. So that's I, that's rare. Yeah. I haven't seen that <laughs> yeah. too much. I'd rather see it young in a dog, you know, that's super confident. Everybody asked me like, like, did you build Wapom? Like, nah, that, that dog just had it from the beginning. Yeah. The, you know, Stephanie picked him out for me and he had it. I personally am not one uh, that's going to be waiting and all that stuff on, on a dog. Now, I, I, I don't know if you, you're the same, but I, I very early on accept like, hey, this is my family pet dog mm -hmm. and this is going to be like my competition dog. And if my competition dog isn't going to work for a competition, I'd rather him enjoy his life with somebody who's going to enjoy him for what he mm -hmm. is. And it doesn't care about competing with him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just how I am. Yeah. Um, with my older dogs, when my parents were still alive, if um, my dog was retired, my parents were so happy to take on my old retired dogs. And, and it was it was perfect for me, too, because then I could you know, Still. get the next one in there. Uh, and now they're gone, but I have absolutely no problem with a dog that I'm done with, mm -hmm. um, moving them on. Yeah. You, 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 want, you want a dog to live with that's pretty yep. well trained and, and just kind of a cool dog. Here you go. Yep. All right. So the next question is, and this is from Nova, the German shepherd, my buddy, Chris, uh, mentally preparing for events, trials and maintaining motivation, even on the worst days. Like, how, how, yeah. how do you how, how do you deal with all that? Well, so my husband says that um, the one thing I'm missing as a competitor is I don't have that killer instinct. And um, for me, when I go into a competition, uh, it's me against myself. I'm testing my training. Um, in fact, you said to me. Last weekend, whenever we were competing, you said to me, gosh, Larry, I, I didn't realize you got so nervous. And I don't, I, that nervous feeling, that's that's what it's all about for me. I love that uh, adrenaline Excitement, rush. Excitement, love uh -huh. it. Uh-huh. Um, but I, there's a book called, um, It's Not About the Blues. It's Not About the Blues. Yeah. And, um, and they talk about, because we talked about this, if you can see the perfect routine in your mind, then you can make it happen. If you can't see it in your mind, you're never going to make it happen. I'm just the opposite of that. I um, I think of everything that could go wrong. I'm thinking about, okay, these are going to be my strong points and these are going to be where I'm going to have to handle carefully. And um, the one thing I try to do is um, if I if there's a boo-boo out there, whether, uh, well, let's say it's the dog's mistake, I, I, I they don't, I just have to play it off. Come on, let's go to the next exercise. Yep. Um, so for me, I, I think I'm just kind of casual about it. I I know that um, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah. I know that. And for me, usually if my dogs are working really good right before trial, trial goes. If the dog's giving me a hard time and I'm thinking maybe I won't even compete them, it's when I've had some of my better trials. So you got it. Yeah. Cool. Hope cool, cool, cool. Uh, so... Uh, you want to talk about the, the show and tell thing? Sure. So uh, one thing we want to do here on this podcast is when we have guests uh, for them to bring something that, you know, if they want to share, it doesn't have to be the, you know, the most memorable thing, but bring something with you that jogs a memory or is a nice memory for you. So what did you bring today to share with us? Well, last night it was really difficult because I had several things that I wanted to show and tell, but I ended up with... Um, my intercontinental shirt. Nice. And you can't see the back, but it does have a Malinois. That's like the American flag. And um, that was that was kind of a big deal for me. That was, Is that uh, when you went to France? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, I, it wasn't my dog I was competing. Um, I was just handling her, but I did take her from her brevet to her three. And um, it, we were just at level two, which was perfectly fine. Um, and it was quite a the uh, the culture uh, around the sport in France was it way different than here yeah yeah um I mean they do it so often and so regularly like uh, trials are every weekend so it's not like us where you know uh, um, once every quarter or so maybe yeah. we have a trial and everybody gathers and you know you've got all your different camps and you know hopefully everybody kind of gets along a little bit and um, get out there and do your thing. And I'm sure they have a little bit of, I think every 
place does have a little bit of that uh, competitiveness, but um, like all of the dogs were good, like, like really good. You know, it, here with the Americans, you know, some get you could have two. <laughs> yeah, some, well, again, you know, and a lot of it is the it's the handling errors that are made too. But um, and the other thing that was really neat there because Hosna was an import from France, and like as soon as we got um, when she started hearing the language. She just, she was like, I'm home. Really? Yeah. And she, um, I mean, it wasn't our best routine, but she worked. Nice. She worked good. She so. was a nice dog. I she was good. Yeah, dog. she was a nice, yeah. she was a good dog. Uh, she, she was owned by uh, Kathy. Kathy O'Brien. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kathy. I remember that. Yeah. When you went out there, ha ha that was the first time you'd been? To France. Uh -huh. To France. How was, how was it for you as far as uh, competing here in America going there and competing in a, in a different country where you didn't know any, you didn't know the language, you didn't know any of the people, you didn't know any of the judges, uh, or maybe you did, but um, how was that? French ring was created in France. Yeah. So I felt like out of my element, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm trying to be like you. Um, so that, that was a little bit different, but they, uh, everybody was really nice, you know, um, at, at least, it, it appeared and supportive. And um, one thing that I am uh, kind of ashamed of is that I didn't do a little more um, um, language that mm. I didn't learn some commonly used phrases because that's a, a big thing. You really need to um, try harder. And, Got um, it. but as far as the sport itself and, uh, you know, it, there you don't have open field at those oh, kind wow. of events. You just show and up. And that was super weird. <laughs> We're like, what? So, Eve Mavanga invited us to, you know, to his place mm -hmm. like the night before the trial. And that was another huge That's cool. thing for me. And, um, of course, we stayed at Patrice's place nice. and trained with him. And that you know, that's yeah. like celebrity Those are like status. legends yes. in French <laughs> ring. Yes. Like for people that are listening that don't know, just... I'm, I'm Hervey, Hervey Mavonga. He's, he's the, one of the owners of Demon A now. And yeah, that's like one of the top decoys. So if you don't know who he is, look him up. Yeah. Yeah. Not looking to, to drop names, but, um, the fact that I had that kind of, um, interaction with both of them was just unforgettable for yeah, me. Yeah, That's cool. That's awesome. Well, I just want to thank you again for always uh, helping us out, not yes. just us, but like the rest of the team. We are blessed to have Larry as part of the Elevated team. Thank you. And I will say that over and over again. Happy to be here. And uh, thank you for coming on our uh, our little podcast that we started. I think yeah. it's, awesome. it's going to be a good one. Anytime. Thanks, uh, guys. So, Larry, where can people find you? On Instagram? What are your accounts? Uh, Instagram at Larry, L-E-R-I, Hanson, H-A-N-S-O-N, um, or Nitro Staff, Icky. I C H I or working Pitbull central. Awesome. And if you guys want to book with Larry, just go to elevatedk9.com. <laughs> 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 <laughs>